So as we had our previous class, we saw that we are actually focusing more on a motor where we ended up uh, talking about calculations of the force and that magnitude of force, we had to consider the direction of the force where we had to consider uh, the Fleming's left-hand rule. But in this case, talking of electromagnetic induction, which is the part that is mainly to be referred uh, as output waveform as you consider an alternator. You're now talking of the generators there. So given the output of that alternator in form of a waveform, you're going to actually have a sine sodium waveform, which is a sine wave. Remember the concept of your sine wave from your mathematics entry. As this is the time that is being presented, this is going to be our voltage. Remember this graph, we have it in our entry. This will be at zero degrees, at 90 degrees, which is going to be amplitude there at maximum, at 100, at 270 degrees, which will correspond here with a minimum value and at 360 degrees. So you have these guys from the math mathematics, uh, this and that, and the calculation of the voltages depending with the stages that will be, but you'll be talking of the, uh, like the instantaneous values depending with those inst instantaneous values, time, instantaneously at given stages. So we are going to have that as a, like, as a topic on this when working with this type of a graph of a sine wave. This one, we're going to consider it uh, on its own. Uh, that's where we'll be talking of the AC theory there. That is where it will be coming into consideration. So in this part of our electromagnetic induction, that is where we talk of the, Faraday's laws. Uh, okay, let's consider this part of our Faraday's laws of what? Electromagnetic induction of electromagnetic induction. Uh, these are just, you see these laws, guys, we are just studying, like these are laws that have been, someone studied, like, see, okay, this is happening then. So this was uh, 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 Michael Faraday who studied these laws and saw that, all right, in terms of the, in terms of dealing with electromagnetic induction, we can consider two laws which are very, very important. And what are these laws? The first law is considering that an electro motive force which is also referred to as an open circuit voltage is always induced in a coil whenever the magnetic flux linking or the coil changes okay let me put this into writing you say that here I'm, I'm, we are just stating what he said not to say this is what i'm saying this is what he said an electro that is an electro uh, motive force, an electron motive force, which is also to be referred to as the EMF, or it is referred to as the open circuit voltage, all right, which is also to be referred to as the open circuit voltage, is always in used, is always in used in a coil is always in used in a coil whenever like i was saying that is whenever the magnetic flux whenever the magnetic flux are linking with the coils changes linking with the coils changes so this is the first law of the guy called Michael Faraday. That is what he is saying. In this also concept, the second law is saying that the magnitude of the induced EMF is dependent on the rate of change of flux, of flux linkages. So he is saying that the magnitude Okay, let's consider this also. That is the magnitude of the induced 
that is the magnitude of the induced emf is dependent so it is dependent on the rate and what is the rate of that that is considered that is the rate of change of flux linkages the rate of change uh, that is the rate of change of flux linkages that is the the the, the magnitude there of the induced emf is dependent so if you are to consider the Faraday's laws, these fake, there's a law that you just need to work on. But what are we talking about? It is the electromotive force, the EMF. The EMF, we're talking about the EMF, the EMF. In the previous class, we're talking about the force. We're talking about the force, the force. But this year, we're talking about that. the EMF. The EMF. So I want to know what is it about this EMF? So let's talk about the magnitude of the EMF induced. The magnitude of the EMF. So the magnitude of the EMF can be calculated. So we can just use the formula uh, to calculate this magnitude. E is equal to BLV from the magnetic flux density that we had times the length, times the velocity. So we are talking about what? The magnitude of induced EMF there. This is the magnitude, take note, of the induced EMF. Of the induced EMF. Remember B, we talked about this. This is our magnetic flux density, which is taken or to be measured in Tesla. This is your length. And your length, as we know, in what? In meters. And V there is your velocity, which is to be taken in meters per second. So they were simply talking of what? The induced EMF, this is voltage, guys. So it is measured in what? In volts. So when you talk of the magnitude, you can use the formula and you have your magnitude. But for the direction now, for the direction, just like what we had in our previous class when you're considering the issue of the force. In order for you to have the direction of this induced EMF, that is where we have to consider now. Again, we are back to Fleming's, but now it is referred to as the right-hand rule, considering uh, the Fleming's right-hand rule. We can have that direction that we are considering. So the direction is dynamically induced. The direction of the dynamically induced EMF can be obtained. So what does it state? What is the major concept of this? So it states that you have to hold the thumb, first finger, and the second finger of your right hand. This is your right hand. So in that case, if the first finger points the, the direction of the magnetic field, so the first finger, Pointing the direction. This is your first finger. Okay, it's going to be pointing what? The direction of? Direction of the magnetic field. And your thumb in the direction of motion. So the thumb is going to be focusing on the direction of motion. You are going to notice then the finger will point in the direction of the induced current. That is the direction of current. But we're talking of what? The induced EMF, remember here. So you can present this as the induced EMF. That is how it can be like. Direction of the induced EMF. So the requirements now, because they will need you to also consider the requirements for electromagnetic induction according to Michael Faraday because he's the one who was going through this guys as we are just learning to say what is it that you told what is it that is you told us from what you was, was studying Michael Faraday was able to prove that for any EMF to be induced three things are to be considered 
These are now the requirements. These are now the requirements for electromagnetic induction. The requirements for electromagnetic electromagnetic induction. What is it that you are going to require? What are we going to need? One, you will need the magnetic lines of flux. You are going to need the magnetic lines of flux. Number two, you are going to need a coil or a conductor. So you're going to need a coil or a conductor. Number three, you are going to need motion. In this, we have everything that is needed for electromagnetic induction. So I want you guys to go through uh, your notes, practices, this and that. Uh, that is going to be uh, best for you in terms of your revisions. Just try to check, depending also with your textbook that you are using at the end, uh, because you also have to consider uh, the textbook that you are working with. Uh, what are they referring to? And also your syllabus. Go through your syllabus. This and that everything is supposed to be possible. Then also you have to consider, sometimes they can even uh, ask you about the Lenz's law, which is a part that is to be considered a letter. Most of it, the calculations in N4, but according to the Lenz's law, it is used to determine the direction of statically induced EMFs. So it states that the direction of the induced EMF is always such that it tends to set up a current opposing the change of flux responsible for producing it. So let me write it down. So it states that the direction, that is you have to consider there, the direction of the induced the direction of the induced EMF is always is always such that is always such that it tends it tends to set up a current to set up a current in that case uh, opposing. So this current is going to be opposing the change of flux. Opposing the change of what? Of flux responsible for producing it, which is responsible for producing it. Responsible for producing it. So this is the major part that you need uh, in terms of the lenses law, like major part you actually do it uh, the calculations there in your N4, but I just know your basics. So let's consider some typical questions with the information that we had. A conductor is 125 millimeters long. We are given the length of the conductor. We have it. 125 millimeters. Convert this to meters, just divide by 1000 or multiply by 10 to the exponent of negative 3. We have the length. That is going to give us 0, 0.125 in meters moves at a constant velocity of we are given the velocity that it is moving at this time that is 15 uh, meters per second at right angles remember at 90 degrees that there is no effect the sign of 90 degrees will give you a one it's supposed to be at right, right angles to a uniform magnetic field having flux density of we are given uh, the flux density which is 1,8 tesla how clear the magnitude of EMF induced in the conduct? What is the magnitude of the EMF induced in the conduct? We saw that the magnitude can be calculated from the formula BLV. Given magnetic flux density, the length in meters, the speed or velocity in meters per second, it can be calculated. So we have everything, our B, our length, our V is there. So that's going to be 1,8 times the length. 0, 0,125 times the velocity, which is 15. So that was going to give us E, which is the magnitude of the induced EMF. It is something that is that is there. 
you are given that at 90 degrees. So it's just uh, going to be you and your calculator is going to be 3,375 volts. That is it. All right. Considering another question, you, you were given uh, on question number eight, a conductor having an effective length. You are given the effective length of 300 millimeters divided by 1,000 also. That's 0, 0,3 in meters. Moves with a velocity of, you're also given the velocity there, 18 meters per second perpendicular to the magnetic field with a uniform magnetic flux density of, we are given the magnetic flux density of 0, 0.45 Tesla. Calculate the magnitude of EMF induced. So guys, we are still on the magnitude of EMF induced. So this was a direct question, just like the previous ca uh, case that we had. E is equal to ELV. And we have got everything there. Magnetic flux density is given 0, 0.45. The length is given uh, 0, 0.3. The velocity, we have it, which is 18. So that was going to give us the value of E, which is 2.43 uh, volts, which is the induced or the EMF induced in the conductor. So like I said, let us do revise as much questions as we can. Just try to uh, figure out how the questions are going to be working with the uh, recent question papers. I'm going to present also recent question papers so that we do understand how are they going to ask these typical questions. 